4. Lottie The next years at Miss Minchin's select seminary, Sarah was treated more as a guest than a little girl. Privately, Miss Minchin disliked her, but she was far too practical to do or say anything which might make such a desirable pupil wish to leave her school. She knew quite well that if Sarah wrote to her papa to tell him she was uncomfortable or unhappy, Captain Crewe would remove her at once. Sarah was praised for her quickness at her lessons, for her good manners. The simplest thing she did was treated as if it were a virtue. But the clever little brain told her many sensible and true things about herself and her circumstances. And now and then she talked these things over to Ermengarde. Things happen to people by accident she used to say. It just happened that I always liked lessons and books, and could remember things when I learned them. It just happened that I was born with a father, who was beautiful and nice and clever, and could give me everything I liked. But if you have everything you want, and everyone is kind to you, how can you find out whether you are really a nice child, or a horrid one? Perhaps I'm a bad child and no one will ever know, just because I never have any trials. Lavinia has no trials, said Ermengarde, and she is horrid enough. Lavinia, in fact, was spiteful. Until Sarah's arrival, she had felt herself the leader in the school. She was rather pretty, and had been the best-dressed pupil in the select seminary until Sarah's velvet coats and furs appeared. This, at the beginning, had been bitter enough, but as time went on, it became apparent that Sarah was a leader too. Sarah was a friendly little soul, and shared her privileges and belongings with a free hand. She was a motherly young person, and when little girls fell down and scraped their knees, she ran and helped them up and found in her pocket a bonbon. So the younger children adored Sarah. More than once she had a tea party for them in her own room, and she allowed to play with Emily and use Emily's own tea service. Lottie Lay admired Sarah greatly. Lottie had been sent to school by a young papa who could not imagine what else to do with her. Her young mother had died, and as the child had been treated like a favorite doll, or a very spoiled pet monkey since the first hour of her life, she was an awful little creature. When she wanted anything, or did not want anything, she cried. In some mysterious way, she had found out that people felt sorry for a very small girl who had lost her mother, so it became her habit to make great use of this knowledge. One morning, passing a sitting room, Sarah heard both Miss Minchin and Miss Amelia trying to quiet some child who, evidently, refused to be silenced. Oh, 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 Sarah heard. I haven't got any mom, ma. Oh, Lottie, screamed Miss Amelia. Do stop, darling. Don't cry. Please don't. When Miss Minchin came out and saw her, she looked rather annoyed. I stopped, explained Sarah, because I knew it was Lottie, and I thought perhaps, just perhaps, I could make her be quiet. May I try, Miss Minchin? If you can, you are a clever child, answered Miss Minchin, and she left her. When Sarah entered the room, Lottie was lying upon the floor screaming and kicking her small fat legs violently, and Miss Amelia was bending over her in despair, looking quite red and damp with heat. Sarah went to them quietly. Miss Amelia, she said in a low voice, Miss Minchin says I may try to make her stop. May I? Miss Amelia turned and looked at her hopelessly. Oh, do you think you can? she gasped. I don't know whether I can, answered Sarah, 
still in her half-whisper, but I will try. Oh, Sarah, said Miss Amelia, we never had such an awful child before. I don't believe we can keep her. But she left the room and was very happy to find an excuse for doing it. Sarah stood by the angry child for a few moments and looked down at her without saying anything. Then she sat down on the floor beside her and waited. Lottie opened her eyes and saw a little girl. But it was the one who owned Emily and all the nice things, and she was looking at her with interest. I haven't any mama, she announced, but her voice was not so strong. Sarah looked at her with a sort of understanding in her eyes. Neither have I, she said. This was so unexpected that Lottie actually dropped her legs and lay and stared. A new idea will stop a crying child when nothing else will. Then Lottie asked, Where is she? She went to heaven, she said. But I am sure she comes out sometimes to see me, though I don't see her. So does yours. Perhaps they can both see us now. Perhaps they are both in this room. Lottie looked about her. She was a pretty little curly-headed creature, and her round eyes were like wet forget-me-nots. Sarah went on talking. Perhaps some people might think that what she said was rather like a fairy story. But it was all so real to her own imagination that Lottie began to listen in spite of herself. She had been told that her mama had wings and a crown, and she had been shown pictures of angels, ladies in white. But Sarah seemed to be telling a real story about a lovely country where real people were. There are fields and fields of flowers, she said, forgetting herself, as usual, when she began, and talking rather as if she were in a dream. Fields and fields of lilies, and little children run about in the lily fields and gather flowers and laugh, and the streets are shining, and no one is ever tired, however far they walk. And there are walls made of pearl and gold all around the city. But they are low enough for the people to go and lean on them and look down to the earth and smile and send beautiful messages. It was a pretty story. When it came to an end, Lottie was very sorry. I want to go there, she cried. I haven't any mama in this school. Sarah saw the danger signal and came out of her dream. I will be your mama, she said. We will play that you are my little girl, and Emily shall be your sister. Lottie's dimples all began to show themselves. Shall she? she said. Yes, answered Sarah, jumping to her feet. Let us go and tell her, and then... I will wash your face and brush your hair. And from that time, Sarah was an adopted mother.